Today, I come before this body with a deep sadness that this institution has failed the Constitution and failed the American people. We have reached a low point in our history. We failed to hold a fair and honest impeachment trial. And we are nearing a vote where we will fail to hold the president accountable for his abuse of power and a cover-up. Thanks to the Senate Republican majority, this body is complicit in that cover-up, refusing to call witnesses and obtain documents to get the full truth. How can we turn a blind eye to the truth as we cast one of the most important votes we will ever take? Yes, Mr. President, we are approaching a sad day for this body and for this country. But to those across the country who feel profoundly angry and saddened by this miscarriage of justice, my message is this. Do not give up. Do not stop fighting to save our democracy. Because America is worth the fight. America is worth the fight. Make no mistake, try as they might to cover it up, the full truth will come out. And the facts have already been, the facts that have already been revealed are damning. The president's hand-picked ambassador, Gordon Sondland, testified, quote, everyone was in the loop, end quote. The more we find out, the more revealing his testimony becomes. Not only is the president implicated, so is the vice president and the secretary of state and the attorney general and the president's acting chief of staff and his former energy secretary and even the White House counsel, the lead lawyer in this very proceeding. This is a Pandora's box the Republican Party is fighting to keep shut. But it will not stay shut. The president's misdeeds and his wide circle of accomplices will go down as one of the ugliest episodes in American history. Even now, the evidence gathered by the House and that the president abused his office and taxpayer funds for personal gain is staggering. Ambassador Sondland didn't sugarcoat the truth. Was there a quid pro quo? The answer is yes. That was his quote using official power for personal gain, that is the very essence of abuse of power. And that's precisely what this president did. That's hardly even in dispute. The evidence is overwhelming. The president first withheld a coveted meeting until the Ukrainian president would announce investigations into the Bidens and the debunked conspiracy theory that Ukraine, not Russia, interfered in our 2016 election. The president next withheld congressionally appropriated military aid illegally to try and force the Ukrainian president into making the announcement of the investigations. The Independent Government Accountability Office confirmed that the president acted illegally. The president threatened our national security, the security of an ally, and the integrity of our next presidential election. How much more could be at stake? Ukrainian officials began asking about the aid only hours after the president's now infamous July 25th call with President Zelensky. That's according to Laura Cooper, the Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Russia Ukraine and Eurasia. A former deputy foreign minister in Ukraine reports Ukraine knew of the freeze in July. And the whole world knew once the story broke the news on August 28th. Fortunately, the president got caught and was forced to release the aid. He got caught red-handed and immediately commenced a scorched earth blockade in Congress and the courts 
to cover up his grave misdeeds. Again, the facts are not in dispute. So, Mr. President, knowing that these are some of the most serious and solemn words I will ever say or utter on this floor, I will vote to convict the President on both articles of impeachment. He is guilty by any standard. If he is allowed to act with impunity, he will be a continuing threat to the sanctity of our democracy. He is patently unfit to hold the highest office in our land. While the Senate may vote to acquit him, he will not be exonerated, not by this sham trial. While the Senate may vote to acquit the President, history will not. Now, senators on the other side of the aisle are publicly and not so publicly admitting that they believe the president is guilty, that the House managers proved their case. But these same senators did not vote to hear witnesses and get documents. They will fail to hold the president accountable for the wrongdoing they now say he's guilty of. This is one of the worst abuses of presidential power in our nation's history. This is as bad as or worse than Nixon's, President Nixon's. Nixon tried to corrupt the 1972 election and cover it up, but he didn't try to extort an ally or invite foreign interference in our election. At that time, members of his party, with courage, refused to turn a blind eye. The Republican Party of today bears no resemblance to the party of Howard Baker, who insisted on getting to the truth. Howard asked, what did the president know and when did he know it? It bears no resemblance to the party of Barry Goldwater, John Rhodes, and Hugh Scott, who went to Nixon to tell him the Republican Party could no longer protect him from impeachment and, re and removal. I'm grateful to the honorable officials who had the courage to act this time around who defied the president's order not to come forward. Ambassador Yovanovitch, Lieutenant Colonel Vindman, Ambassador Taylor, Mr. Kent, and the others. They risked their careers and even their personal safety. We should at least, at least show the same courage because the consequences of failing to hold this president to account could not be graver. The guardrails have been taken off. The president invited Russian interference in the 2016 election and invited Chinese interference in the upcoming 2020 election. He said on national television he would probably take foreign interference again. He is unapologetic and unrepentant. What is he going to do next once the Senate Republicans let him get away with this abuse? Once we show that we are no longer a co-equal branch, we have never ceded so much power to the executive. You can rest assured this president of all presidents will use that power and abuse it. Take his word for it. He said, and I quote, Article 2 allows me to do whatever I want, end quote. Pulitzer Prize-winning presidential historian John Meacham said that the president is now, and this is his quote, quote, functionally a monarch, end quote. That is stunning. Again, Mr. President, these are sad days for our nation. But as I said at the outset, we cannot and will not cede our democracy, concede our democracy. We cannot and will not concede the values and principles that make this nation strong. We must restore the balance of power in our government. We must restore accountability. Most importantly, we must start doing the work the American people sent us here to do. Our institutions are not representing what the American people want. Senate Republicans' refusal to hold a fair impeachment trial, which is what 75% of the American people wanted, 
is just the latest example. So while the Senate and the Constitution took a terrible battering the last two weeks, I'm even more committed to breathing life into our shared principles of representative government. I'm going to continue the fight to take obscene amounts of secret money out of our elections, to make it easier to vote, and to bring power back to the American people and not hand it over to an imperial presidency. The Senate will have future opportunities to restore our constitutional system. The only question is whether senators will rise to the occasion. Mr. President, I... Uh